a worker will first use this device, referred to as a stunner. Here's a demonstration. <laughs> this renders the beast instantly unconscious. Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response, I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of the hilarious Salmonella Academy's videos called The Journey of a Beef Cow. As he goes on, I might discuss the journey of uranium from where it's found naturally to where it makes nuclear power. I wonder if there's going to be any overlap. Let's see. Hey kids, do you ever feel like life has passed you by? Does the daily grind leave you feeling trapped in your own life like an animal in a cage? Well, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy some fun facts about uh, when you're working an outage doing fours and ones, uh, that's four days on and one day off for over a month, you start to lose track of time. You start to lose concept of what a week is. So just to give you a sense of what a lot of uh, operations crews and engineering crews are doing during an outage. Livestock while you're at it. Today, I'll be giving a tour of the life, death, and processing of the American beef cattle. <laughs> Disclaimer, this video is only a basic summary of some common industry practices. No two farms are alike. Some are nicer. Some are worse. I'm not a shill. Please don't get mad at me. Now <laughs> and when I mention stuff about uranium, I'm just going to be talking at a high level. In the beginning, there was nothing. And then God said, Let there be light. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> it's a... Brick wall too? That's crazy. So let there be light appropriate for uranium because they are to have come from supernovas, hypernovas, kilonovas, big explosions in space. Since the fusion from stars will, is not actually hot enough, even really massive stars, to get you all the way to uranium. Supernovas are though. So supernova, then stardust, space dust that ultimately forms into planetary nebulas and condenses into a planet. Sure, that's where it comes from. And it was good. Henceforth, you shall be called Craig. At birth, the calf weighs somewhere between I highly doubt they. I highly doubt they named the animals they're breeding for the purpose of making into meals. <laughs> Pounds. The males are typically castrated within the first couple of weeks, usually without anesthetic. The main point of this is to keep the steers mellow later in life, but it also stops their male hormones from giving the meat an off taste that the American palate isn't really accustomed to. Anyway, things started off pretty good for Craig. Drinking milk, hanging out, the life. After a while, he figures out you can eat the floor. That's cool. But then, after about 10 months, he gets loaded into the cattle cars. If you're a history buff like me, you know that's not a good sign. So uranium actually starts off dirtiest. The dirtiest part about uranium is mining it. Mining, uh, it's no different than mining anything else. Um, it might actually be less hazardous than mining coal simply because you don't have to do it as much because the uranium fuel density is so much more dense than coal. You don't need nearly as much uranium. We're talking on the order of a few metric tons of uranium to power a over a gigawatt of power for 18 to 24 months compared to coal, which goes through several tons of railway cars every day. But it's still hazardous. Uranium itself, the radiation isn't hazardous, but it does eventually decay into radon. So there will be some in the area. Now, granted, there's radon in the crust just in general, but it, it'll probably be it, it's going to be elevated around uranium and thorium deposits for that matter. But that's definitely the most hazardous part of the job is the uh, mining it. Little does Craig know, he's been auctioned off to a feedlot a thousand miles away. Here the cattle are packed together like sardines, and uh. sardines were 500 pound terrestrial mammals. The menu consists of random roughage and energy dense feed like corn so they can pack on the pounds more quickly. Overall, this environment puts a good deal of stress on the beast, which can end up taking a toll on his health. But, it's nothing a little visit from the antibiotics fairy can't fix. Well, you're enriching the size of the cow just like that, you enrich the quantity of uranium. So it gets milled and processed into yellow cake. You've probably heard of that before, but then it gets turned into a gas to, uh, that's uranium hexafluoride in order to aid in the enrichment process. Think of it just a bunch of gas diffusers in order to separate out the relative mass. So uranium is mostly uranium-238 
But uranium-235 is the real active ingredient in a nuclear power plant. So naturally, uranium-235, less than 1%, much less than 1%. But you're going to want it anywhere between 3 and 5% for a typical uh, nuclear power plant. So you enrich it using these uh, gas centrifuges. Fully grown, Craig gets taken to the packing plant. This is where the magic happens. And by magic, we mean mechanically automated goring into commodities. This I always love his use of acronyms. It's, it's some good salmonella stuff. This is where things get messy, so try to forget that we gave this random animal a name a minute ago. In order to keep things as humane as possible, a worker will first use this device, referred to as a stunner. Here's a demonstration. <laughs> this renders the beast instantly unconscious. <laughs> that sound effect sounded horrific. <laughs> Or worse, but potato potato. Or worse, yeah. Its ankle is then attached to a conveyor rail, which will gently guide the animal along the rest of its journey. First, the cow gets to talk to this man. He's called the sticker. Can you guess what he does? If you said that he gouges out throats for a living, you'd be correct. Over the course of about a minute, the flow goes from torrential downpour to incontinent poodle, by which point our beloved bovine can continue on his way. At the next station, the cow is subjected to high voltage electrical stimulation. Hopefully the nervous system is all out of steam by this point, but if not, the boys on the killing floor will have a great story to tell their wives. <laughs> Just kidding. The FD I had no idea about slitting throat plus electric shock. That's... wow. A estimates that 93% of meat worker marriages are in shambles. Who knew that 11 hours of pure slaughter every day could be <laughs> in the bed? Man. Anyway, electrical <laughs> stimulation basically works to speed up the onset of rigor mortis. Getting this process out of the way means the meat won't toughen up once it reaches the freezer. Ne wow, I, I had no idea about, about that. So once it's enriched, it's put into a processing facility, kind of like that, sort of, not, not really, but it just gets converted from the, into these little uh, pellets of uranium oxide, so it's turned back into a solid. These are ceramic pellets, and then those are shaped into fuel rods. So hey, long stiff objects just like what you're trying to do, what, what they were trying to do with the, with the rigor mortis, but, and then that's, that is what they ultimately get used for for, make, for making electricity in a nuclear power plant. The carcass undergoes a thorough power washing. Like the noble mortician, this hose works to make a lifetime of filth disappear. Unfortunately, though beauty is only skin deep, manure runs to the core, so the cow must be disemboweled to prevent contamination later on. And we might as well get rid of all these other gross bits while we're at it. Then the feds stick their nose in things to make sure everything is as it should be. Mm-hmm. 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 Yup. It's a cow. Finally. <laughs> so fuel is inspected by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. It's a little bit more invasive than that, but then say, huh, yep, this is uranium fuel, but <laughs> I like that. We send it down the line, evacuate the spine, bifurcate the hind, reticulate the spline, and power wash it again just for good measure. This whole process, from bashing to slashing to splashing, takes a mere 15 minutes to complete. That means it takes the same amount of time to process three half-ton mammals and one scheduled license renewal. Try puzzling that one out. After hanging out in the wow. pool for a couple days, the beef is broken down into its many cuts. Chuck, loin, sirloin, what have you. This is the good stuff. That'll get shipped off as is to barbecues, bar mitzvahs, and bargain bins all across the country. Then you got all these misfit bits hanging out wherever else. Still technically flesh, so we have machines pluck it off, pulp it, and use it to make hamburgers, hot dogs, and the like. Then all the <laughs> frappuccino can't stomach is sent off to the rendering plant to be made into whatever else. So That's crazy. Well, so one thing to point out, um, I kind of got ahead of the thing, so all the choice cuts, that, that I guess that could be your uranium fuel types, but there are bits and pieces that are left over and it can get refed through the same uh, centrifuge process. So using the cow analogy, you would just run all that stuff back through that same process. It, 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 doesn't, really, it doesn't really work like that for, for cows, but you can essentially run it through just to extract as much of the uh, uranium-235 as you possibly can. There you have it. I don't really have an outro except, uh, kind of gross, right? Yeah, it is. And to finish this off, um, Look on this one. Uh, so this is in the U.S. It says in the future it may be reprocessed or stored in underground repository. Yeah, uh, right now they're just stored in dry cast storage on site. Uh, those are those are highly durable. And uh, I talk a bit more about waste and dry cast storage in another video that I'll pin down in this the description. But it would be really cool if we could reprocess, which is basically just recycling the fuel. 
after, after it is used, because there's so much energy potential there. Alas, there are concerns about proliferation that really we could we could just be a whole lot more efficient with the uranium fuel cycle. Well, there you have it. There's another uh, silly analogy I made with uh, something nuclear and one of Sam Manella's hilarious videos. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.